Good morning. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord this today? All right. I've been asked to make an announcement. There's still people coming in. If you're sitting on the end, I, I hate to move anybody. And I know we still have some seats, but, but kind of scoot in and let people that come coming in a little bit late have a place to sit. Um, I know it's kind of tight. God's blessed this place. So I want you to stand for the reading of the Word this morning. And then we're going to go right into worship. I want to read this morning a passage of Scripture from Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you in Galilee and there you will see him. You all got dressed up. You all got cleaned up. Let me tell you what's about to happen today. We're going to see him. He's going to be here in faith. He's going to be here in promise. He's going to be here in power. He's going to be here in worship. He's going to be here in preaching. So you didn't get cleaned up for nothing. So I want you to tell your neighbor, hey, let's have church today. Father in heaven, we magnify your name. And we're so grateful that we serve a risen Savior. I ask your blessing upon all the events of the day. That God, you would bless our children. You would bless our youth. You would bless our nursery. You would anoint the singing, the worship, the preaching. All that entails today, God. You are
Amen. Y'all may be seated at this time. We're going to dismiss our kids for their Easter experience this morning. So if y'all kids today, grab your buckets, grab your bags. Parents, we're going to have a short Easter service this morning up in Kids Link. And then right after that, they're going to be dismissed for their egg hunt. You'll be able to pick them up at the Life Center as normal. If you're a guest today with us, we just want to welcome you to Five Church of God. And if your kids are also running out the doors to find eggs, uh, you can just dismiss this after service today to pick them up right outside these doors. And you will be uh, escorted. You may find somebody that can help you find them, but it'll be the Life Center gym right out behind this church. You can pick up your kids this morning. Um, I just want to say welcome to all the family that is here today. Home folk, let's give it up for everybody that's here today joining us. You're in for a treat today. At this time, we're going to uh, take up the offering this morning. We're going to receive it. If you want to give this morning, you can give at fivelife.com. If you want to give in person, you can give in person. If you don't have anything to give today, no pressure. You don't have to give at all. We just want to just Bless the Lord this morning. We just want to be thankful for what he's done for us. And we're also thankful to Five Church of God that you're here with us. If you're here again for the very first time, we have bathrooms out to my right, your left. Women's restrooms to my left, your right. Um, and if, if any time you have a child that you need to take care of, we have a mother's room right outside to my right, your left. At the end of the hallway, uh, we have nursery available. So we're just thankful for all that. and We're providing that for you. Let's pray this morning. Father, thank you so much for this Resurrection Sunday and everybody that's here today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just bless every single family that's here today. God, you are a God who loves us. You know where we're, each and every one of us are at today. God, I pray that you would meet the need of every single person that's here today. Father, it's in your name that we lift up Jesus Christ this morning and every day. We thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the fulfillment that we have as those who are saved, God, and following Jesus. There's no other plan. There's no other way. There's no other life than the one that Jesus Christ laid down for us to be able to live and walk in freedom. So today, we lift up the name of Jesus. We pray that you would bless the offering, bless the tithe. And God, the worship today, we, we pray that it would just magnify you, Lord, in, the, in the, the words, God, in the preaching of the word today, God would transform every life here today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen.
As we read through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we find King Jesus, the God-man who knew no sin yet had so much compassion for sinners. He was touched by their needs and moved by their faith, so moved that he brought sight to the blind, healing to the deaf and the dumb, life to sons and daughters. He cast out demons and made the lame to walk again. And the list of miracles that he performed goes on and on. In Mark 2, 1 through 5 and 11 through 12, we find these words. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together that there was no room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Jesus, he had compassion for the paralytic. But it was the faith of the friends that moved Jesus to action. In Matthew 9, 20 through 22, we read, And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came and behind him, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole that hour. Jesus had compassion for the woman who had the issue of blood, but it was her faith. Believing if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. It was her faith that moved him. Tear off the roof, the king's in the house. Cause I'm pressing through to you, I don't care how. I don't got a way to get the healing. I've got a faith beyond me. Tear off the roof, cause the king's in the house. There's power in the presence, power in the blood, power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the breath, power in the blood, power in the name of Jesus. He has more in the hymn of the garment than the camp of the
Some are known by great authority For kingdoms as far as eyes can see In royal robes they rule the thrones Waging wars they overthrow the weak And call it victory my king is no my mercy my king is no my grace for the hope in his name and the power that saves in my king is no Thirty-two. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them. And for my clothes they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. And they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, another on the left. 
And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple, build it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he can't save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathana. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. The mockers cried. They cried out. They said, He can't save himself. But what they could not understand was that King Jesus could save himself. But he chose to stay on the cross because of his love, his mercy, and his grace toward us. He chose to follow the Father's plan so that we could have life. Verse 57, Now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also believed and become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, As the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake from an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him because, and they became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, don't be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they quickly went from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Satan thought that he had won, but the stone was rolled. The grave was empty, and Jesus had defeated hell and the grave. The woman held Jesus by the feet, and they worshiped him. Oh, that we would worship him today. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn 
Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, 
those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus means Yahweh is salvation. Jesus was sent by God for a particular purpose, and his personal name bears witness to that mission. The same Jesus who had compassion for sinners when he walked on the earth and who was moved by their faith still has the same compassion for us today. And he is still moved by our faith. He is still the God of miracles today. Jesus, you reign. Your name is still the name above all names.
This morning, we pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. And according to his might, the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and he set him on his own right hand in heavenly places, he is far above principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And God hath put all things under his feet and given him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness which fills all in all. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him all things were created, whether they're in heaven, whether they're on earth, whether they're visible or invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things are created by him and for him. He is before all things, and through him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. This is all things that he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness dwell. And wherefore God hath so highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Let's lift up the name above every name. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Everybody shout the name of Jesus.
that one more time. Join with us. As they're stepping down, here at Fife Church of God, we have what we call prayer cards. And I don't want to leave anybody out. I want you to understand what we do. There's pens across the stage, and there's a little basket right over here. We'd like to pray for you. At the end of the service, if you've got a need, these cards are laid all across this stage. And we believe that if you've got faith enough to write a prayer request down, and put it in the hand of somebody that's going to pray for you that God's going to direct somebody to pick up that card and for seven days they're going to pray over your need. So I want to offer that invitation for you. Grab one of these cards. We believe in divine healing. Can I get an amen from anybody? We believe that the Word of God is still true and that when we pray one for another, God's just going to do something. So I want to encourage you at the end of the service, to grab one of these cards. They're laid over here, and, and they're laid right over here. Write your request down. And let a member of our prayer team and a member of our church pray over your need for seven days and watch and see what God will do. Thank you for choosing to worship Easter with us at the Five Church of God. I want to ask everyone, I know we've had a great experience. Did you enjoy this choir this morning? just leading us into the presence of God. You guys knocked it out of the park. But I would like everybody to stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. If you have your Bible with us, you can turn to the book of Colossians chapter 3 and then Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read them backwards. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and then Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 19. But before we do, I want you to look over at your neighbor you don't have to move. And I want you to just tell him, it's so good to see you in the house of God this morning. I know it's already been said, if you're visiting with us, your kids are fine. They've hid eggs. And the Easter Bunny's over there. If you want your picture, we're not going to have the Easter Bunny here in the church but he'll be outside, and he'll be over there towards the office, the playground area. If you want your picture made today with the Easter Bunny, he is around. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If then you were raised with Christ, 
seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, power. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. He's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. Could we bow our heads? Father, I'm so grateful to celebrate Easter with this congregation. God, I'm thankful that we have been led into your presence through worship, through drama, through singing. I'm thankful for the spirit that we have felt in this place. God, your word is powerful. Speak to us today. Lord, I'm just a vessel, a mouthpiece, your servant. So today, I hide behind your cross that you and you only be seen. But Lord, I pray that your word, it does not go out void, would touch the hearts, would touch the lives of individuals today. And that we would leave here knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And everybody says, Amen. You may be seated. A lot can happen in three days. Just last week, last Sunday, this church was filled with palm branches and we celebrated as We celebrated Palm Sunday that Jesus Christ came into town riding on a donkey. And Pastor Jake brought a great message as everyone celebrated King Jesus. But this morning I want to remind that a lot can happen in three days. Friday we worshiped the Lord here with a symbolic message of foot washing and communion that Jesus commanded that we do as He did and we celebrated Good Friday as we served one another. A lot can happen in three days. So let me go down the story of what has happened. Jesus has been betrayed by Judas. Those who were His friends just looked the other way and they put blame on Judas. Jesus is taken aside and he is beaten on that Friday. 39 times the soldiers whipped him, marring his flesh, and repeatedly punched and mocked. Jesus was taken to Pilate and he was tried before the Roman procurator with false witnesses brought forth. Pilate couldn't find anything to charge him with. But the crowd persuaded, and they said, Give us Barabbas, who was a sinner. Pilate turned and washed his hands of this conviction of Jesus, and Jesus is arrested. The soldiers would weave a crown of thorns and beat it down upon his head, and they would place a cross upon the shoulders of Christ, and make him carry it up the Villa de la Rosa, Via de la Rosa, the steepest street in Jerusalem. The crowd jeering and mocking him, pulling his beard from his face as he stumbles up the street. Isaiah reminds us that his features were so beaten that he was beyond recognition. He falls carrying the cross. 
So the soldiers call upon a man named Simon the Cyrene and command him to carry the cross the rest of the way. Upon that hill, his hands and his feet are nailed to a tree and he is left there to die. Darkness covers the city. Jesus hanging on the cross between two thieves and the soldiers. They cast lots for his clothes and the crowd again taunting and jeering. He saved others, yes, he cannot save himself. It was Friday and the thief on the cross says, Remember me when you go to your throne. And Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus, for the first time in his life, experiences separation from his Father. Jesus says, It's finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In the temple, the curtain is torn in two. The centurion standing there confused. This is the Son of God and Jesus dies. He was taken from the cross and placed into a borrowed tomb. Sealed with a Roman seal and soldiers would place guards upon and around the tomb. And I read just this week from Chuck Lawless. This tomb was a place of darkness, especially when its entrance was covered by a large stone. There was no light on the inside. Silence reigned there. For no voices spoke from inside the tomb. It was a place of memory more than a place of hope. Finality hung in the air. No one ever came out of this place. Not this time, however. Someone unique had been buried there. Someone who had already announced that he had no intention of staying in that grave. No, this time it was Jesus that was buried there. The Son of God, the one who would say that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Now, when you're the life, it makes sense that death would not be able to hold you. No rock would be large enough. No hole would be deep enough. The tomb that won the rock was in the place. Place, this time somebody would come out in the dark cave the light of the world would brighten it hope would spring forth from it death would lose its power in it because of its emptiness unknown ordinary followers of Jesus would give their lives to tell the story of his victory you and I have that same privilege today all because of Jesus. A lot can happen in just three days. Jesus now has the keys of the kingdom. We read in Revelation chapter 1 of where he went. He went into hell and began preaching. And he comes out full of power, glory, and majesty. And reminds us, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Brother Johnny, he raises himself up out of that grave. Overcomes death, overcomes hell, overcomes the grave. But here it is, maybe you feel alone. Maybe you at times have felt falsely accused. People have lied about you. You've been lied to. You've been told that you're no good. You've been told that you're worthless. Maybe today you're dressed up nice, but you feel unloved and unwanted could be that your friends have turned on you. You've been beat up mentally, emotionally, maybe even physically. People are enjoying your shortcomings. 
They're taking opportunity to jab you with words and leaving you emotionally and even mentally scarred. There's pressures of the job, pressures of home or wearing you down, worries of health, worries of loved ones, financial burdens, financial worries. Your own health may not be that good. Suffering is your new norm and it has stripped you of joy. You feel surrounded by darkness. Seems like you're all alone. Take heart. That's exactly the way it was for Jesus. The events that are taking place may look bad. But tell your neighbor, a lot can happen in just three days. Are you weakened? Are you overcome with stress? Are you overcome with worries, sometimes distraught, sometimes just distracted? Are you alone, self-esteem at an all-time low? Do you feel the walls closing in around you and you seem like there's no way out? Again, that's exactly how Jesus felt. Today is Resurrection Day. Today is we celebrate a resurrected Savior. He who overcame the world will help you, will strengthen you. Satan has tried to stop him. Many have denied him. There are those who don't want anything to do with him. The world does not know him, but I came by here today to tell you he is still Savior. He is still Redeemer. He is still Healer. He is still a Deliverer, the Deliverer. He's still Hope. He's still Comforter. He's still a Restorer. He's still a Burden Bearer. He's still Peace. He's still an Advocate. He's still a Counselor. He's still mighty God everlasting. If you haven't known it yet, His name is Jesus. He's the one that can. He's the one that will and always has. He is, He is, He is a more excellent name. We celebrate Him today. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Therefore God has also exalted Him, given Him a name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee would bow, those in heaven, those in earth, those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We read in Hebrews 13 and 8 that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, And forever. We sing about it. There's light in His name. There's truth in His name. There's power in His name. But know what Jesus Himself said in John 14 and 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that I'm going to do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. In Mark 16 and 17. In my name you will cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. Jeremiah said it like this in 10 and 6. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great and your name is great in mine. Hebrews 2, 13. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will sing praise to you and again I will put my trust in him there is power in the name of Jesus you're here and you're hurting you're here and you're distraught you're here and you're hopeless you're here and you don't know what to do all you got to do is speak the name of Jesus He will heal. He will deliver. He will help. He will give you hope. For by Him all things were created in heaven, in earth, invisible, invisible. Whether it be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. He is before all things and in Him all things consist. He is the only eternal high priest. All other priests had their priesthood terminated at death. But He ever lives to make intercession for us. Everybody's going to die, but only Jesus rose himself from the dead. There's none higher, there's none greater. His majesty, his splendor, his greatness. As we read before, when you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. In Christ, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. A lot can happen in just three days. As we go to Scripture and we begin to read the words of Christ, Christ Himself would say, After three days, I'm going to rise. 
I can just imagine the disciples and the Mary, as we've read several times today, would scratch their head and even forget what he said. But he told them, I'm going to raise myself up after three days. So rejoice. Don't be afraid. Go tell my brethren in Galilee and there you're going to see me. But then he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So go therefore make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always. So what does that mean for us? You and I have a message of hope to proclaim to the world. Again, you may feel feel dark. You may feel wrapped up in a tomb. You may feel like the enemy has had his best in you, but you've got a message of hope to proclaim because a lot can happen in just three days. You have the reason not to be caught up in the things of the world and I know the world comes against us, but we do not have to be caught up in the midst of the world because resurrection is a reminder that our home is not here A lot can happen in just three days. You can even risk it all. All that you have to serve God. Even if faithfulness to Christ would cost you your life. A lot can happen in just three days. Because after all, all of us look forward to new beginnings. New starts. The resurrection is a reminder that God is the God of these new beginnings. A lot can happen in just three days. And I want to tell you this morning that apparent defeat is never final. It may seem like you've lost the battle. It might even seem like the enemy has conquered in your life. But it surely seemed that way on the cross. An empty proof definitely determined, definitely proved that there is power in just three days. Three days seems like a lot, but yet sometimes three days seems like a little. So I want you to trust that the dark days of your soul are not final. They're real. They're here. But we don't have to stay in the tomb of despair. You don't have to be in darkness long. Because in trusting in Jesus and calling upon Jesus and knowing Jesus and understanding the price that Jesus paid for your salvation, although he was in a tomb, he said, I'm only going to be here for three days and then I'm going to come out. We have the power of the resurrection living within us because of Jesus. You too can raise up out of that pit. You too can raise up out of that darkness. I know it's real and I understand where you are is real but because He lives you can face tomorrow. Because He lives you too can live. Because He lives you've got power. You've got authority. You have Jesus. Somebody give the Lord some praise. A lot can happen in just three days. It also means that we can trust the Word of God. All of the Bible points to the Redeemer. All of the Bible points to Jesus. All of the Bible points to the one who will reign forever. Not a dead rebel whose tomb is still occupied, he will keep his word and we can proclaim that word with confidence. A lot can happen in just three days. But we do not have to live in despair over the condition of the world. It may seem that Satan is winning But know this and understand this. He will not win in the end. The cross and especially the resurrection broke the back of Satan. I could imagine the party he thought that he was having when Jesus was dead and he was crucified. And he said it is finished in Satan's mind. He throws a party. But when he came out of that grave, it broke his back. And he knew that death was finally defeated. We can trust that we are never, never alone. The Holy Spirit indwells within us and the risen Lord always lives to make intercession for you and for 
me. In the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 5, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. I want you to understand the price that Jesus paid for you. As I went through that Golgotha Hill and I went through that Via Della Rosa and I went through all of the things that took place on that Friday. That there's a lot of us, we feel like that Friday. But Ephesians 2 and 6 tells us that we've been raised up together and made to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Everything that we've done, everything that we've said, everything that has happened at the five church of God today has pointed to one and that was Jesus. The one that can save, the one that can heal, the one that can deliver, the one that has all power, all glory, and all eminence and he wants to... Give it to you in your dark days, in your plains of despair, even in your rejoicing. Jesus does all of that so that you can have victory. That's how much Jesus loves mankind. It's an old phrase, but when he was on the cross, you and I, were on his mind. He died for the sin of man. And he rose up so that death would be defeated. And he went away and prepared a place for you and I. And he said, I must go away to prepare a place for you. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you another comforter. He's going to help you. He's going to guide you. He's going to teach you. He's going to minister to you. So from our text, we are told to seek those things which are above. Why try to pray God down to us with our problems when we can go to Him through Jesus Christ and rise up to where He is? God has something better. His name is Jesus. God has something more powerful. His name is Jesus. God has something present. His name is Jesus. Psalm, God has something permanent and His name is Jesus. And Jesus wants to change your life Right here, right now, today. So we're told in Colossians to rise up to where he is. Now that may not make sense to many. But if we rise up to things above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, setting our things, our minds on things above, not on things on earth, kind of makes sense to not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of what's going on around here, huh? Now, I'm not saying don't pay attention. I watch the news. I pay attention to what's going on in the world. But let me tell you something about this pastor. I don't get very bothered by it because I know where my home is. My home's in heaven. I'm just cruising through this thing called life right here, trying my best to get as many people to go with me, trying to get as many people to, to know Jesus Christ. And I'm just passing through here. And in doing so, I, I see this going on here. And I watch this going on over there. And I see people shudder and see people, oh, pastor, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to rise above to where Jesus is. And we're just going to praise 
Does that mean I'll never have a bad day? No. Does that mean I'll never be tempted? No. Does that mean I'm never going to struggle? No. Does that mean my bank account is going to get full? No. Does that mean that that every time I pray I'm going to be healed? No. But everything, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I'm still going to get sick. I'm still going to have accidents. I'm still going to do this and I'm still going to do that. But what am I going to do in the midst of it all? I'm going to praise the Lord through it all. And I'm going to know that He is with me. And because so much happened in just three days, some of you need to learn to wait on the Lord. As we said before, Mary, Martha's at the tomb. She goes to prepare. She goes to see. She goes forgetting what Jesus had just said. A member, a lot can happen in just three days. And in doing so, she gets there and the tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. And there is an arrogant angel. I like to look at it sitting on that rock. I can just picture him with his legs crossed, sitting there saying, what are you doing? He told you this was going to happen. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? He ain't here. So go get the disciples and go tell them. Understand Jesus cares about your problems. He cares about your woes. He cares about your hurts. He cares for your family. He cares for your friends. He cares about everything that you're going through. Even though it may seem dark where you are. Even though it may seem despair where you are. Go to Christ. Go to Christ. Go to Christ. So what does it mean to go and rise above? You know where healing is. It's in the arms of Jesus. You know where deliverance is. It's in the hands of Jesus. You know where power is. It's in the hands of Jesus. You know where where restoration is. It's in the hand of Jesus. And we've got to get to where he is. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to get to where Jesus was. The man that was sick, they had to get him to where Jesus was. And it's still the same today. We've got to get to where Jesus is. A lot can happen in just three days. He's got all power. He's got all provision. My God has everything that we need from here forever and ever and ever. But somebody just needs to get into the presence of the Lord. How do I do that, Pastor? I'm glad you ask. The first thing you have to do is admit to Him where you are. You have to admit to Him your problems, your despair. And there ain't no reason to lie to God because He knows everything about you anyway, but all He wants to do is hear you say it. Empty your closet to Him. Let Him come in. And Scripture says that when you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you're saved. That's even for us Christians. Sometimes we just got to get into the presence of the Lord. And when we do that, we can start worshiping and praising and making worship a very active part of our life. And then we can go to Him in prayer. And when we go to Him in prayer and we make time with Him and for Him, He begins to fill us and feed us and help us. And He, and he draws us to His Word and we begin Bible study and we begin going to church and we begin a foundational type of deal and we grow and we grow and we grow associating ourselves with other believers because there's always strength in numbers. Satan wants to alienate you and make you feel all alone because that's when you are the most vulnerable. But that's also when God is seeking you 
even the most. And this morning, I encourage everyone to seek those things which are above and seek Jesus Christ. The worship team is going to come, and I want to ask everybody to stand. And I want you to say this with me. A lot can happen in three days. Say it again. A lot can happen in three days. Say it like you mean it. A lot can happen in just three days. But then if you pray today and you give yourself to the Lord, Jesus knew there was strength in telling people and holding ourselves accountable. You need to tell somebody about what Jesus has done in your life. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be the person beside you. But you need to start sharing Christ with people. I believe the number one thing that we fail to do and the reason people fall away from God, they'll get a good touch of what Jesus and only He can offer and they'll keep them all to their self. If I were to give you, and I'm going to say this because of the Chevrolet dealer in the room if I were to give you a brand new Camaro $50,000 car more or less no strings attached here it's it's yours the title the car it's yours I guarantee you'd hop in that thing. Look here what I got. I got a new Camaro given to me free of charge. I don't have a monthly payment. I don't have a bill. The title is mine. I own this thing rightfully. You'd keep that joker clean for six months. And you'd love on that thing and you'd baby that thing and you'd share it with everybody. Come look. It's got leather seats. It's got got perfect interior. And man, this thing will fly. You know Jesus is more than a Camaro. He's eternal life. He's the home in heaven with Him. That car is going to give you trouble. Eventually you're going to have to change the oil. You're going to have to put new tires on it. A year from now after I gave it to you, you're going to have to make updates and do all of this kind of stuff. You're going to forget to wash it. And that's the same thing that happens with our Christian life. We forget to read our Bible. We choose not to pray. It's just easier to do everything else because we always want God to come to us. But what Paul is reminding the, reminding the Colossian church and what we're being reminded, we've got to continue to be with Him. We've got to wash this thing. We've got to check the engine every now and again. We've got to go to our knees and pray. We've got to, we've got to offer sacrifices of praise. We've got to start telling others, hey, come see a man who knew everything that I was. His name is Jesus. And when you tell one and you tell one and you tell one and you tell one and then somebody comes in the knowledge of Jesus just because you, you mean you know Jesus? How can I know him? If you've ever led somebody to Christ, it's the greatest thing that can ever happen in your life because you poured life into someone else. You don't have to be called to preach. You don't have to be at a, at a podium. It could be on the job. It could be at home. It could be, it could be anywhere. 
But when God opens an opportunity and you've kept this thing clean and you've been to where Jesus is, there's something magical that takes place when you're able to share with others what Christ has done in your life. Heads bowed once more, Father. I've spoken your word. The word that you gave me, and I know that a lot can happen in just three days. You know every moment of despair. You know every worry. You know the darkness that surrounds us at times. And even now there may be some enjoying victories. And Lord, I'm grateful for that. But today you have revealed yourself as Savior. Today you have revealed yourself as Redeemer. Today you have revealed yourself as healer, as deliverer, as hope. You've delivered, you've, you, you've revealed yourself as peace that passes understanding. You've revealed yourself as a restorer. You've revealed yourself as a burden bearer. You have revealed yourself as counselor and as comforter. Now, Lord, as you're speaking to hearts and lives, may we choose Jesus. They're going to begin to sing. I like doing things the old-fashioned way. But I know it's going to be hard. But if you want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life today, again, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want you to just lift up your hands and say, I give my life to Him. Everything is His. Everything is His. Lord, be my Redeemer. Lord, be my hope. Lord, be my peace. Be my joy. I can't do it on my own, Lord. I need you. As they begin to sing this song, these altars and these areas are open. It's right there where you are, but a, a member of our prayer team will join you. I will join you this morning and personally pray with you. But you've got to make the first step and you've got to speak Jesus. Make Him Lord of your life and know the power of resurrection. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within a lot can happen in just three days. Speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes. To every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope. And there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is to the pain. Let him speak to the hurt.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the whole Hey, why don't you just do that right now, speak Jesus. Jesus. Come on, do it loud. hope you come back next week. We're here every Sunday, 10, every Wednesday, 630. I would love for you to come back. But while you're here, we want to speak Jesus over your family. So if you're here with your family, specifically your family, would you grab your son? Would you grab your daughter's hand if possible? If you got to move around, I know my daughter had to sit right over there. But if you could get to where your family is, And we want to speak Jesus over your family. As you know, it's great that families together here. And I'm going to be a little, I'm going to be a little evangelistic for a moment. I want all my children and my grandchildren in heaven with me. And I know that's a pretty bold statement. And and it may seem kind of, why did he say that for? Because I'm serious. And I know that the devil would love nothing more than to tug my son, to tug my grandson, and and to get them wrapped up in everything else. And I'm not pointing fingers. He did me the same way, and he still does. So guess what I have to do? I pray for my family. I ask God to build a hedge of protection around them. That everything they do, they know that, that God loves them. And that he cares for them wherever they are, wherever they go. I can't be there and I can't make every decision. But I can pray for them. And I can speak Jesus over my family. I can speak Jesus over my church. I can speak Jesus over my congregation. I can't be everywhere that you are. But God can. He's bigger than I am. And when I go to where he is, Brother Joseph, guess what he does? Daddy, that's one of mine. Cover his family. Daddy, that's one of mine. My blood was shed so that they might be saved. Daddy, God, Jason's praying again. And this time he needs business. And his wife is joining him in that prayer. And Father... You know what your word says, where any two agree, touching one thing. I'm speaking Jesus over my family. 
It may seem silly to some, but I want us all to be together in heaven. And Satan would love nothing more than to steal and to kill and to destroy. But today, say today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of resurrection. A lot can happen in just three days. Satan thought he had won on Friday. But guess what? It's another day. It ain't Friday no more. Today's Sunday. Today's Easter. Today's resurrection. I told you this was going to happen. I told you I was coming out of that grave. I told you I'd raise myself up from the dead. I told you this was going to happen. Guess what Jesus is saying in by his word? I told you I'd save them. I believe the word of God. I told you I'd heal. I told you I'd deliver. I told you I'd comfort. I told you that I would do all of this. So as they sing, you pray over your family. Jesus, over every darkness. Jesus in the street. Jesus. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. We don't typically take them up. It takes up a lot of time, and we've taken up enough of yours. But I ask you, please, right down the knee, before you leave here, if you don't have a pen, I got one right here in my pocket. I'll throw it down here in the floor. Let us pray for you. Let us intercede on your behalf for seven days. And then if God does something, I would love for you to call our office. My lovely wife will answer the phone, 638-623-3822. Tell us what God's done for you. Tomorrow night, every first Monday, we have first Monday prayer from 6 to 7 o'clock. I encourage you to be here. 6.30 on Wednesdays, we feed your kids, we feed your youth. And we have Bible study in here. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to see you every Sunday morning, 10 a.m., until the Lord comes back. We're going to be having church. Father in heaven, I pray your blessings upon this crowd. Thank you, Lord, that we can speak peace over our families, that you've given us the authority because you arose. And as we celebrate today, may we not stop today at Easter. But we would serve you tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And we would keep in mind the third day. That we would keep in mind, Jesus, the Christ. That we would all join together in heaven. 
thank you, Lord, for this resurrection day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for being at the Five Church of God. We love and appreciate you. See you next time.